So at this point, you probably have a lot of code that you are working on and you might want to optimize that code or you might actually want to find out where it's being slow. So in this video, I'm going to be going over how we can profile it. And we're going to be using a native module called C profile. So to do this, we're going to go ahead and import C profile and we're going to import time so we can use the sleep function to simulate some requests because we're going to be making a fake website backend. So it's going to make API requests, it's going to be able to refresh the page and so on, just so we can see where our program can be improved and we can actually get how long it took to execute certain parts of the code. So first we'll go ahead and create an API call and we know API calls are very costly functions. So we're going to go ahead and just type in sleep for two seconds and we're going to return none. And of course you would probably want to return some JSON or something, but we have nothing to return here. Then when we have some data, we want to process it. So we're going to create a function called process data. And the reason I'm writing these functions out is so that you can see exactly which kind of code we're going to debug and find out why it's running slow and where it's running slow. So this is gonna be for i in range 10 to the seventh power. So that's a big number. And we're just going to pass. So it's just going to waste a lot of time for us. It's going to loop through this for no apparent reason, but it is going to delay some time. Then we need to sort this data. So we're going to go ahead and sort the data and when we sort the data, we're just going to use this for loop again, but we're going to make it a bit more costly by making it much bigger. And we're going to go ahead and process the data inside. So when we sort the data, we're also going to have to process the data after. And now there's just one more function we need for our website, and this is going to be called reload page. And reloading the page is actually really simple. All we need to do is process the data, and we're going to sort the data and we're going to call time.sleep for just two seconds. Now, try not to concentrate that sort data already processes the data. We're just going to process the data and then we're gonna sort it for some reason and it's going to process the data again and then it's going to sleep for two seconds just to simulate that it's reloading the page. And this is just to show you that we have a lot of processes going on. And finally, we have our main function where all the action actually takes place. So that's going to take the API call. Then we're going to sort that data and then we're going to reload the page, which is going to just do whatever it does. So these are all example functions. And very shortly, I'm going to show you now exactly how we can profile it. So now, as always, I'm going to go ahead and create my name is equal to main check to make sure we're running this in the correct file. And now we can go ahead and create a print statement that says timing program, just so we can tell that the program's actually working and that it's not frozen. And finally, inside here, we'll go ahead and call cprofile.run and we need to pick a statement. And for this one, I'm going to use the main statement, which contains all of the code for our entire program. And we need to pick a way of sorting this. So to sort it, I'm going to go ahead and sort it by cumulative time. So that's just called come time in the program. And there are many ways you can sort this. I am going to be leaving this page in the description box down below. It is a stack overflow question that shows you all of the different kind of sorting methods you can use with C profile. So if you want to profile it by the name, the line, the number of calls, the primitive call count, that's up to you. I'm going to leave this in the description box down below but we're going to really concentrate on the bare basics of C profile so you can jump right into it. So at this point, we've created the entire program. Now let's go ahead and run this program so we can understand where our program's taking time. And the main part of this tutorial is teaching you how to read the information down here because the first time you look at this, you might be thinking this is a lot of information. So first of all, we have 13 function calls that have been executed in 8.2 seconds. So that's already telling us how long our program took to execute. Then we get the ordered by, which tells us how we're ordering this. So we're ordering this by the cumulative time, how long it took in total. So the whole program, essentially this part here, the module took 8.29 seconds. And that is the cumulative time that we are sorting this by. Now let's make this a bit smaller because I want to go through this line by line. So here we have main, which is on line 28. And as you can see, we have these three calls. And in total, that took 8.229 seconds because that contains all of the logic that we wanted to profile. 
and profiling this is excluding the if name is equal to main check because all we decided to profile is the main function. So the cumulative time is going to be 8.229 seconds for main and each time you call main it's going to take this long. So that's not the problem, that's our main function, it's allowed to take that long. Then we get the reload page function which is right above it and since this is a function that only contains functions inside here it's still going to give us the cumulative time for this function of reload and the whole call time for reload page. Now where this actually gets interesting is on sort data because inside here you can see we have two per call columns and we have a total time and a cumulative time. So this is the part which really gets confusing. Why don't we have any total times here and per call times here but we do in this row down here. And to explain this let's go to sort data and it's actually quite simple. What the first per call tells us is how long it took to execute the logic in the function of sort data. So if you have any native logic such as this for loop it's going to calculate it right here and it's going to tell us that's how long it took to just execute the logic inside here excluding the process data part. Process data is only going to be included in the second per call for sort data. So the total time for sort data with the local logic of this for loop it's going to take 1.8 seconds and since this function was called time in our entire life of the program it took 3.6 seconds but the cumulative time was a bit longer since we did have the process data function which up here wastes some more time it did add a few more seconds here and it did increase the cumulative time and if you're really curious about how long process data took as you can see down here you'll find that on line 10 we have all the information about process data. It was called three times so the total time it took in our program was 0.55 seconds and it took 0.183 seconds per call. And the cumulative time and the per call time are exactly the same because we have no added functions in the process data. You'll also notice that sleep is a built-in method so it's going to calculate it as its own logic which means if you call sleep it's going to say sleep took two seconds to execute all the logic inside it since it is native logic and the total time and the cumulative time in our program was four seconds. So let's try doing something different. Let's go down here and change the sort to total time. So tot time and if we run this we're going to get a different graph. It's actually going to be the same graph except it's going to be ordered differently. So now with the total time we can see where our program is actually taking the longest. We have the main function of course but here we can see a function that took four seconds for no particular reason. So now to optimize our program we can just go ahead and do whatever we need to remove that part. So we can remove it here, we can remove it here and when we rerun this program we should have a major optimization which is of course a really fake optimization because we just purposely slowed it down but now when we rerun this we'll be able to see that we only have sort data which is taking the longest time and we can try to optimize that again if we want we can go ahead and say hey we don't need to do all of this we can actually set it to the second power and if we rerun that we're going to have an even faster program so now we have main that takes the longest and that's perfectly acceptable since that is our main point of the program but we can still choose to look and profile our code to see what takes long and possibly improve the time of the execution. So that's actually all I wanted to share with you today on how you can use C profile to profile your code and possibly optimize it. It's a very powerful feature, it's native and it's super simple to use and it gives you so much information. So in case your program's going slow in certain parts, just put C profile in there somewhere, create a main function and just throw it in there. And you can even just C profile independent functions in case you want to see how the functions are working. But I believe I covered everything that was necessary in this video. Do let me know in the comment section down below if I missed something important. I would love to hear it and possibly make a video that goes much further in depth with profiling. But anyways, with that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.